5x plus 7 must be smaller than 1 times 17. Okay? And also, this implies that x minus 1 times 5x plus 7, okay, all over, well, it's all over, let's say, 10x plus 15, okay? that this must be less than 1, 17 uh, all over. Well, we want to make this the bigger number. Okay, isn't that right? So we want to make this the bigger number here. Uh, so make this a bigger number than what's over here. So we know that this fact is actually less than 17 over, over 15. Okay. Uh, but we know that 17 over 15 from our choice of delta, that our 17 over 15 is less than epsilon. So this implies that x minus 1 times 5x plus 7 all over 10x plus 15 Okay. We now know that that's less than epsilon because this is less than epsilon. Okay? And now we have <clears throat> uh, transitivity, if that makes sense. Uh, but look at this function here, that this is, this is f of x minus l. This is f of x minus l. The absolute value of x, f x minus l is less than epsilon. So this here is x minus a is less than delta. So from here, okay, this here is is x minus a is less than delta. So from here, we've inferred that f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So that works for the case when delta is equal to 1. What about the other case when delta is equal to 15, 17? It's the final case. So let's say, okay, <clears throat> let's say, this is, the, another, this is the easy one, I suppose. Let's say okay, delta is equal to 15, 17 of epsilon okay, is 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 the min of 1 and 15 17 of epsilon okay so what we need to show so we must we must show that that the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than 15 17 of epsilon that that implies that x squared once again uh, what do i say it was it's x squared plus 2x plus 1 all over 2x uh, plus 3 minus 4 fifths is less than epsilon. So we have to show this, okay? But from the premise, so but from x minus 1 is less than 15 17 of epsilon, but this implies that x minus 1 in times uh, 5x plus 7 must be less than 15 17 of epsilon, okay? Okay times, well, 5 sevenths, 5x five times 7 is less than 17. Isn't that right? That's what we had a moment ago. So 5x plus 7 is less than 17. So 17 is a bigger number here. So this actually is true. So times, let's say, 17 times epsilon, okay? Which now gives us, well, that's, that's this implies that x minus 1 times 5x plus 7 is less than 15 epsilons, yeah? Now, but let's um, divide here now by, we're going to divide here by 10x plus 15. So this is the absolute value of x minus 1 times 5x plus 7 divided by 10x plus 15. This absolute value must be less than uh, 15 epsilons all over. Well, hang on. If we divide, if this is less than this, and if we divide this here by a bigger number, okay, than what we divide over here by, that inequality will still hold. And what's a bigger number? Then what's a <clears throat> what's so this has to be the bigger number okay, compared to this over here. So this needs to be the smaller number compared to this. And we know the smaller number that 10x plus 15 is greater than 15. So this number must be 15. And voila, what do we end up with? We end up with this implies that x minus 1 times absolute value of x minus 1 times 5x plus 7 all over 10x plus 15. Those two absolute values must be less than epsilon as required okay this is just shown here that f of x minus l is less than epsilon and this here is that assuming that x minus a is less than delta okay so what we've done here is once again we've derived assuming this to be true we've derived this particular fact down here which is the definition which is the definition of our limit Whew, voila. Okay, guys, I know that there was a lot of work. There was a lot of work involved in that, okay? The main, the main part of the work was obviously in trying to find an appropriate delta. Uh, but the strategy that we, that we always use is, 
is we start with the conclusion. We work the conclusion down until we get something like x minus x minus in the, the something like the premise. That's what we had here, but we had some baggage. So what we're going to do is to, we're going to try to figure out what's going on with the baggage here. And to figure out what's going on with the baggage, we restrict this x minus one uh, to be. We want to be very very close to one. So let's just actually let's actually. I just chose one here. Uh, it could have been a half. It could have been uh, ten fifths. It, it could be anything at all. But in this case, I've chosen one. So by restricting x minus one to be within one, okay. Okay, uh, what we now know is that we restricted x plus five x plus seven, and we also restricted ten x plus fifteen. And these facts, then these bounds on these two things, are helping us to reduce this inequality here. Okay, okay guys, a lot of work there. Uh, once again, this is Jonathan Lambert with Maths and Stats, um, and I hope that this video, uh, one of our first videos dealing with insoluble. Uh, rational functions and applying uh, the epsilon delta definition of a limit. I hope that this was intuitive and more importantly, I hope that was helpful and thanks for watching. Okay, bye-bye.